Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Beef and Lamb New Zealand's podcast slash webinar, Seen and Heard. We're putting this one out in both formats because it's an important one and we want to give to as many people and as many farmers as we can. So today we're going to be talking about farming and operating a catchment community group program. We're speaking with Roger Dalrymple, a farmer involved in the Rangitiki Rivers Community Collective Incorporated, which you'll hear about shortly. They're a pioneering catchment group and we wanted to capture their story. Um, I'm also joined today by Richard Parks, the Environment Capability Manager for Beef and Lamb New Zealand in the North Island, and you'll hear from him throughout the interview as well. Beef and Lamb New Zealand's environment strategy was launched last year, and it, it, uh, we've covered it on another podcast, but it encourages farmers of all industries to work together at a significant scale. And a farmer-led catchment community group is a key way to get runs on the board and at scale. So on that note, welcome Roger. Um, G'day Aaron. Welcome to the call. So look, we always start off with this, um, yep. it's important to set your credentials. So what's your background? You're a farmer and uh, what yep, are you farming I, yep, yep, I'm a farmer, uh, have been, I'm passionate about it. I've been, I knew I was going to be a farmer the day I sort of even thought about it. Um, so we farm, farm with my brother, Waitata Pier Station, out on the coast by, um, from Bulls, uh, neighbouring Flockhouse. Um, been there for four generations. Um, and we've got sand country, quite a large, diverse farm. Uh, with irrigation, cropping, forestry, uh, lamb finishing. So, yeah, no, big variety. Yep. And Richard, you, I think we've had you on an interview or a podcast, but you better give us the introduction again. Who are you? What do you do day to day? Why are you, why are you here at Beef and Lamb? Yeah, so I'm the Environment Capability Manager in the North Island, so a key part of the Capability, capability Manager's role is to um, kind of support our farmer leaders and, and to support the sector to... Um, enhance our environmental position and that's a key part of underpinning um, New Zealand's red meat story and, uh, and taste, taste pure nature. So I'm going to steal the thunder a wee bit here but um, you arranged this, why are you keen for us to record this interview with Roger? Um, Roger's um, and some of the other people within the Rangitiki catchment, um, Mark Crystal and others have, have done a fantastic job last year of running a whole series of community meetings um, where they really managed to engage with the, with the broader farmer audience in the Rangitiki about some of the real key reasons to set up a catchment community group. And how we've set up our catchment community program is um, for our farmers to tell the story and instead of uh, generating um, kind of generic templates we're capturing a lot of the uh, material that's been gen generated by um, successful catchment groups. Mm -hmm. And what Roger's really great at and what he's developed over time is a fantastic, um, what I call a, call a sales pitch. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's really good at explaining yeah. the reasons about why you set up a catchment group. And for me, it's really important for farmers to hear that from other farmers and logistically, mm -hmm. uh, I can't get Roger around yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to all of, all of uh, you other catchment groups that are looking, or all people that are looking at um, are kicking this off. Mm -hmm. oh, you're going to have to live up to a high expectation. Oh, I know, he's really sitting the bar pretty bar. high, isn't he? So, but yep. community catchment groups are something that, you know, in our environment strategy in Beef and Lamb New Zealand, we see them as a really big way forward for, for the industry to achieve. We're going to hear about you know how this one in particular but generally yeah you know, and it's it's as you said Aaron in, in the warm-up it's it's about how we deliver impact at scale and I think what we'll uh, Roger will, will touch on in his presentation that although a lot of the focus is uh, in initially around environmental reasons and people understanding about their their water catchment there's a reason why we've called this the catchment community program and it's about reconnecting farming communities and people coming together and some of the opportunities that present, mm -hmm. um, not just in the environment space, but in actually uh, you know, mm -hmm. coming together around some central themes that are really important um, to individual groups. All right, so this one's gonna run a wee bit different. Now, normally they're an interview and a bit of a back and forth, but um, Roger's got his, his presentation here. We're gonna run through that, He's, and Richard and I will chip in with um, questions or, or points of clarification from as we go so take it away Roger right thanks Aaron 
Um, welcome everyone, uh, Rangitiki Rivers Community Collective um, Incorporated. That's the that's the name we've come up with for our thing, um, for our for our group. Um, and as Aaron's already pointed out, it is really important to have community um, and collective in there because it's all about community. It's not about being farmers or other individuals. So before I start, I think we should. I, I've set up a slide um, as to where we are today uh, because we all need to establish where we are today. Um, so at the moment we have social pressure and it's, de and it's demanding change. It's been going on for a while. There's social media, um, there's, there's green groups, there's, there's, um, there's, 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 there's significant pressure from society and it's not going to go away because once upon a time there used to be a thousand letters to the editor and only one got printed. Now there's a thousand letters to the editor via social media and everyone gets printed and read. So sh social pressure, we're up against it. Um, farmers need to catch up. We need to recognise that we're behind. I think we do recognise behind, but we need to tell people that we recognise that we're behind in the environmental space. And it's not our fault that we are behind. Um, it was only 30 years ago uh, we were being paid to clear trees um, from land. Um, so, but we today we need to we need to clearly. Um, let people know that yes, we know we are behind as to where society expects it today, and uh, we've got to move on, move up the times. Um, we need to take responsibility for our environment. Um, we need to be, we should need to be providing, uh, we need to be providing evidence and stewardship of sustainability. Um, we can't just say we're doing it; uh, we have to actually show it. And you know, I, I hear so many times that we have to tell our story. Um, I partly agree with it, uh, but I, I, I more dis uh, great disagree with it probably in a greater extent. And the reason being is I don't believe, uh, when, I, when I hear someone telling me how good they are, I don't listen to them. But if someone else tells me how good they are, then I really listen to them. Um, and so we do need to uh, tell our story, but it's far better if someone else tells our story on our behalf. So that's why we have to prove... Um, our stewardship and our sustainability so that others can tell our story on our behalf. Um, Horizons One Plan. I'm obviously in the Horizons region um, and it was 13 years ago, it might be 13 and a half years ago now that that first came out and all that did was cause a massive rift between farmers and bureaucracy basically. Um, they came and said everything we're doing wrong and told us everything we had to fix and all that did was put us back in, in, in place. And that, that argument is still going on today uh, with the um, court hearing that was in Wellington uh, last year uh, with Fish and Game um, tried to prosecute or tried to... Um, uh, what's the word? What did they do? They, um, they challenged, they challenged the, uh, the, the how Horizons were managing the one plan. So we've, we've, we don't want to go there. We, we need to stay away. We need to work together. So on there, I mean, you, you started off your talk here, Roger, talking about, you know, accepting we need to do things, accepting that we're not actually where we should be, that we're not necessarily doing a good job. Yep. But were you of that opinion before Horizon sort of cannonballed in with one plan? Or, or what, uh, what's caused you to, to come to that view that we... Um, well, I see all the, all the results, and I look at... And I drive around the country, Aaron, and I see places that people are cultivating mm -hmm. where they shouldn't be. I see cattle standing in water, the same as everyone else in society does. So some farms are doing a really good job, but as a whole, there's an image out there that we are not looking after the environment to the mm. standard that is expected of today's society. But was that your view 13 years ago, or is the one Probab plan... Probably people... not, probably yeah. not. To be fair, it yeah. probably wasn't. Um, on our farm, we've been direct drilling and trying to, trying to look after our environment for a long time. Um, but... I didn't look at the whole country as a whole, and I now definitely look at New Zealand as a whole as far as the environment goes, and we are behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. The so not saying that the one plan was correct then, but I mean, no. uh, is it still got issues you're working through without getting too much into the weeds on that one? Um, yeah. Is it still it's still got issues, but all they're trying to do is lift our standard, yeah. um, and you know. Uh, the, uh, We've got our issues. Um, all sorts of other regional councils have got their issues, mm -hmm. which they're challenged, being challenged with at the moment. And um, this isn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the government is going to keep telling Horizons, or not Horizons, regional councils, 
um, that they need to fix this in our particular own regions. Mm -hmm. And that's all coming from social pressure. So that pressure is never going to go away. So those rules are going to keep coming at us, and they're going to keep doing that until we get up to speed. You mentioned uh, about um, Fish and Game and um, some of their legal interaction with with Horizons Regional Council. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the council is also, uh, you know, un under under some pressure too. How have you seen uh, the council's attitude change uh, over the past thirteen years since one plan uh, initially came out? Well, Richard, it's changed significantly. Um, you know, when when the first came out, all they did was went round with a stick and a rule book. Um, and they worked out that that wasn't working. And so now they're actually listening to the likes of our group. Um, we've been engaging with the Regional Council uh, for the last three years. And they, they listen to us and they want to work with us. And it's the same with the regulatory people. They've, mm. still, got to, they've still got to yield their stick. And they've still got to use, their, use the policies and the rules which, which they're bound by. But they are definitely listening to our farmer voice and, and trying to come to a, a happy in between, a happy medium. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really important that that continues. So you think there's lessons to be learned from uh, yeah, Horizons lesson for, for other regions around the country? Oh, most definitely, yeah. Uh, no one wins. No one wins. You know, uh, how, how many compliance officers are we going to employ um, to make people to, to go around and check that every farmer is dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It's just ridiculous. We cannot win this battle with um, compliance and regulation. It's a guide, uh, but as, as a far greater thing, we need to work together and, and let the farmers understand why we need the changes. And there's a lot of education needed. It's not just about saying we must get from A to B. It's not our problem how you get there. Those farmers and, and landowners need, need an understanding of why we're doing it and uh, how we're going to get there. So you talked about uh, Horizons 1 plan, but yep. we also um, experienced the Manawatu floods in, in 2014. Yep. Um, how was Horizons' response to that flooding and, and their interaction with, with the farming community? Uh, well, they, they were really good, um, to be fair. Um, they bent over backwards to help us. Uh, that was an extreme event. Um, and some of that, some of that land that, that got dealt to with the flooding and everything and the slips, um, that's, in, that's in their high, in their high, um, high um, uh, um, highly erodible, highly erodible um, area. So, you know, that, that was alluded to. Um, but no, the, the council's been good to work with. You know, it, it, the, the, the relationship between farmers and the council in the, in, the, in the Horizons region has improved significantly. And all these events um, that we have, they work with the community to try and um, see ways that we can help prevent them uh, and how we can cope with them better going forward. So they rolled out the SLUI plans? Yes, there's, there's, a, number of, there's a number of plans being developed. SLUI? Just sustainable, so sustainable mm -hmm. land use and sustainable initiative. land use initiative. Yeah, yep. yep. sustainable land use initiative, and and they're, they're very much like the um, farm environmental plans. Um, in fact, there's a fair bit of confusion between the whole lot, um, but they are similar. They're all about understanding your soils, um, your environment, um, how you best how you best utilize those soils, what their best what their characteristics are for your soil farming. Um, Enterprise, and it's, it's basically doing a, a, a gene pool map of your farm, and utilising the, the, the characteristics of your farm um, to the best advantage, whilst also protecting the environment. Because they're they're almost a gold plated, uh, gold standard farm plan. Then they they follow a very similar line to the yeah. beef and lamb LEP, mm -hmm. and probably you moving more up to the LEP two three. So they've <coughs> got that solid foundation with uh, LUC mapping, um, but they also incorporated economics. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. So the, the economic side of, of the farming has to come in. It's not 100% focused on the environment. The economics also comes in. Um, you know, when, when they do the SLUI plan, uh, you know, it involves, um, it involves ca categorising all your soils on your farm. So Horizons actually put a huge amount of work into developing a SLUI plan for 
uh, the farmers in the Horizons region. It's not just all farmer. Uh, there's a bit of a cost to it. Um, I think most of it's picked up by Horizons, but it's um, people that farmers that have them uh, think they're fantastic. And I think it's 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 an interesting approach because we've talked about um, how we look after our natural resource that our farms are built upon. <coughs> so and, you know, particularly when we talk about the environment, yeah. um, but we can't forget that our pastures and crops and livestock are part of that natural resource. Mm. Yep. Um, and our businesses are built on this, and they've they've included economic. And yeah. I think what's interesting in in now what we see with the emergence of, of your group, Roger, is the development of uh, the social investment it's 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 forming um, you know farmers coming together to take take some yep. collective action yep yep shall i go to the next slide yes carry on well, yeah that's good stuff that's what we want to pull out right as farmers we have a choice we can either sit back do nothing and continue to have regulation that will keep coming at our way or we get motivated and take control of the future and take control of the future and manage the environment to a standard that society expects today. To me, that is the key to community, uh, community catchment groups. If we can either sit back, and I'll repeat it again, we can either sit back and, and keep having rules thrown at us, and the rules will get to a stage that we will be being told that we can only uh, farm cattle on a 25 degree slope between November and March. Uh, that's just an example. Horizons was done 13 years ago. I'm seeing the challenges that farmers are being placed under today um, that from basically with, by rules that are being um, made up by people sitting in an office. And we either, need to, we either sit back and accept that or we've got to say, hang on guys, we can manage our own patch of dirt better than that, but we've got to actually do it and we've actually got to prove it, and we've got to allow people to see we're doing it. So mm -hmm. it's working together as a group. Um, and as I said, you know, um, those those rules, um, they're only, yeah, no, we'll, we'll can all that, but. We'll That's right, yep. so we can start again. You're on a good track there. Do you want yeah. me to ask that question again? Yeah, ask it again. Yeah. Right. Well, do we count down a pause and come back into it? So Roger, the whole point of this is for other farmers around the country to, to learn from your experience. But I mean, is that a what you just talked about there? Is that a lesson learned that um, you've learned it the hard way, in effect? That you, you can't beat the stuff. You've got to join it effectively. That, that you know, 13 years ago when Horizons arrived, it sounded like you didn't necessarily view it this way. But um, this is something you've come to that the, the farmers have got to get on board with this stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, def definitely, Aaron. You know, 13 years ago. I um, we, we weren't in the, in, in the same mindset that we are now. You know, as I, I'm, I'm part of a group um, for, for, with Beef and Lamb, the Beef uh, Farm Environmental Reference Group, and we meet, there's members of that group that are from throughout the whole country, and we meet four times a year, um, and Wellington Richard's part of that group, and uh, we, we see all the issues that are happening around the country, and I tell you what, there's heaps, there's heaps. Um, Horizons, um, we did this 13 years ago, uh, Waikato's in the midst of it, uh, they don't like each other up there, um, and you know, it, it, it all comes back to us taking control and responsibility for, for the environment which we are um, farming within, uh, we, we clearly know society doesn't like the way we're doing it, um, but we need, we need to prove we need to prove to the to the people that are our critics and there's lots of them um, that we do know what we're doing and at the moment we at the moment we're on the receiving end we have to get ahead and 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 we need to get to a stage where where the society says gee our farms are doing a great job they've got our waterways fenced off um, they're fencing off all their critical source areas uh, they're not ploughing um, areas where we're getting massive um, soil runoff into rivers. Uh, there's a whole heap of things. You know, we, we can increase the biodiversity, and it's not going to happen overnight. That is the re that is a very, very important thing. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you know, society, um, the world's been going on for, for millions of years. We're not going to fix it in three or four years. Um, community catchments are something that we might take. 10 to 15 years to catch up to where society wants us. 
Um, but then in another 10 to 15 years, we will actually have a standard that's higher and ahead of where society wants us. And the sooner we get started, the better. Mm. Which I think is actually a nice segue into your next slide, talking about the, trying to move to a proactive model rather than a reactive model, or having, doing things rather than having them done to us. Right, sounds good. What's our current model? Uh, first thing, it's driven from the top down, and I'll explain what I mean. We've got the government um, who sets a whole lot of policies, um, and, and they only come, they don't come from the government, they come from society who puts pressure on the government to say, look guys, um, those farmers are polluting their rivers, they're, they're taking the soils off. So the policy, listen to their government, because, listen to their, uh, their community because they want to be voted back in. So they come up with some policy which they throw at us. That gets given to the region, her regional council, um, and it's, they, say to the, they say to these groups, right, guys, you regulate these farmers and you put compliance in place and you tell the farmers what's happening. And you, you, you set the rules, okay? So it's coming from the top down. Um, they might throw the regional council and um, river groups and things some money and they'll say, to those, they'll say to those groups, they'll say, here's a whole lot of money, you can send it to farmers if they do X, Y and Z, but it's still coming from the top down. To me, it's completely the wrong model. There's a few farmers, there's a few smart farmers who are aware of this money, and it's the same ones probably applying for it all the time, and they're going there and they're getting all this money, so you've got a few key farmers which are fencing off their waterways and planting trees and things, but it's only touching. It's literally a, a, a pinprick to the number of farmers um, that could potentially have access to this money. It's all, it's all flowing around the wrong way. Um, community catchments. What's the aim? First, we need to catch up and then to lead. I've probably covered a fair bit of this already, but it's really important we catch up and then we lead. Um, you know, we're behind. Um, we need to. We need to. We need to get together, and we need to. Uh, it's a bit like. It's a bit, It'll be a bit like a farm discussion group, but I don't think community catchments will ever die. We we need these things going um, for the next. 10, 20, 30 years. It's going to become a norm. It's a bit like health and safety nowadays. It's going to be at the front of mind um, and we need to get uh, environmental um, standards uh, for, our, for our farms at the front of mind. When, we, when we're setting up break fences, when we're setting up our, our cropping paddocks, uh, we need to be thinking, first of all, which is the best soil type for this? Where's my waterways? How do I fence this, etc., etc. Secondly, uh, we need to look after our rural communities. We make them, need to make them vibrant and economically sustainable. And have, forming community catchments is going to help us do that. Um, if, if we can prove uh, to the regulate, regulators, then that will then say, well, oh, we just need to back off a little bit. The community catchments are getting, get, getting together, and farmers, uh, we need to give them time to do it. But if we don't start working as a team in a community catchment, um, um, if, we, if we don't work together as community catchments, then, then we, don't, we don't have a lot of evidence to actually push back. So it's really, we're far stronger as a group than we are as individuals. And do, do you think there's something in the fact that you're supporting each other? that it's not farmers operating one-on-one -on -one in isolation, that there's an opportunity to get better um, outcomes or better understanding if you, um, if, you're, if you, I guess I'm thinking of peer support, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of a better word, but um, that you, you're actually supporting each other instead of everyone kind of rocks up at a, at a farm planning workshop and then they kind of all head off back to their farms, that they provide some kind of teamwork ongoing mentoring. Team. Yeah, teamwork. <coughs> Absolutely, Richard. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, we're far stronger as a group. Um, there's nothing better than being able to lean on the boundary fence with your neighbour and, and discuss a problem um, and a shared problem um, rather, than, rather than working as an individual and having, a lot, and having a whole lot of challenges. And, and when I say challenges, every farm has a different um, expectation and need as far as financing goes and being the amount of money they need to make and what cash they have available. 
um, to be able to operate their farm. So it is very hard to have a blanket rule that's going to suit all farmers. We have some farmers at the moment which are really well, which, which have got their farm into a very strong position environmentally. We've got some who are still probably hiding under a rock. And we don't want to alienate anyone who's hiding under a rock. We want to bring them on and we need to support them um, to help them come up, far, come up quickly. And, um, and, and by doing that, we don't have to spend a whole heap of money. Um, there's, very, there's, there's very simple things we can do which will improve the environmental standard of that farm uh, very, very quickly without spending a lot of money. But they just need the support and the education and the understanding as to how to do it. Um, so what have we got? Um, at the moment, uh, we've got the Rangitiki River's community catchment. We've got the Rangitiki River, which is which you can see the area. It's 392,000 hectares. We've got the Rangitiki Sand, which is 19,000 hectares. So on that map, the Rangitiki River is the one with the green boundary? Correct, right. that's right. And the yep. sand is... Yep. And uh, the, the, the ones are south is, is the Manawatu, is the, is the greyish colour. Um, but uh, the ones we're focusing on is the Rangitiki, and we've put and we've put the Turakina in there as well because it's so small. Is that within the green? It's, it's within it's yep. within the green, and uh, we're potentially going to be bringing in the Fungi Hu as well, which is another two hundred thousand hectares, that's and it's totalling seven hundred and six thousand hectares, which is a big area. So, um, look, I think you know one of the, the quick assumptions or the easy assumptions when we talk about catchments and water quality, an issue is how much dairy farming is going on there and is that issue. But what's going on in your catchment? What's the land use mix? What's um... We've got everything. Yep. Everything, Aaron, from, from, from extensive um, open, open country, you know, up, at, up at the top of the Rangitiki, up on the Gentle Annie mm -hmm. area. There's beautiful farms up there with, with pristine, clean waters coming in from mm -hmm. the, uh, from the, um, uh, from the um, oh, who are they? The army. The army land, uh, Waiuru um, and things, uh, and it comes down to uh, um, intensive, or not intensive, but um, hill country sheep and beef. Uh, then we come down to um, uh, mountain clay country with intensive cropping, uh, lamb finishing, and with some dairy in, in, involved. And we come further on down to the coast where the sand country is with more dairy, uh, intensive cropping, and um, horticultural. Mm. Uh, it's just I read some of the background and had a feel for what's going on. The point here is it's not um, the lazy stereotype of dairy farmers have come in and now we have a water quality issue. And I don't, you know, no. water quality issues exist for all farm types. Yep, they do. Yep. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, we, we've done a little bit of testing in one of our sub catchment groups. Um, it's pretty marks not here, but um, it's amazing what the difference is. Uh, they're not bad, but it's amazing the difference between those little sub. Um, mm -hmm. sub waterways um, and there's no dairy farms up there yep. uh, but uh, no it's interesting we can't we can't blame the dairy farmers and no. I think it's important to ex ex explain Roger when particularly for people who are listening to this when we're looking at the whole Rangitiki catchment and what you're doing uh, bringing together Rangitiki River um, community catchments is it's almost an umbrella group that supports all the different sub mm. catchments, all the little catchment groups. Correct. That that'll probably come up as we yeah. as as we go on. That's a big area, seven hundred thousand hectares. How many farm businesses in that roughly? Do you have a ballpark? No. No. We're talking hundreds? Thousands. Thousands. Yep. Okay. Thousands, yep. That's um I mean is that really feasible to have a build a sense of community amongst that big an area in that kind uh, of area? well that that's the thing Aaron, it's, Aaron, it's not all all the all the Rangtiki Rivers community catchment is that is an incorporated society okay. which is looking after all the sub catchments underneath okay. it. Okay. Right. Oh we'll carry on and right, I'll yeah, um, no, by all means. And, and, and we'll we'll explain. So why are community catchments so important? First is they bring communities together. And that, that, that's what it's all about, really. They bring communities together. So it's farmers, iwi, tourism operators, fishermen, schools, NGOs, all with a common goal. And that's, that's probably because everyone I've mentioned, it's basically society. Mm. We all want clean water. We all want swimmable water. We don't want to lose our soils off our farms. We don't want to pollute our waterways. And we do want biodiversity. So we all want the same thing. It's just bringing the community together. 
And this is probably really important. They provide a willing, and that's the, this is, when you come from that model I explained where we're at today, we're coming from the top down. Mm -hmm. um, that is not a willing model. But what community catchments do, they provide a willing model because everyone's there because they want to move forward. Um, it's, a, it's a forum that we can use to educate people, e.g. the people that are hiding under a rock. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a non-aggressive um, way that people know each other in the community and people can ask questions and we can educate and influence to cause a positive outcome for our environment. Um, but, the, but the key thing is it's a willing <coughs> place. It's no one's there because it's a stick. Um, whereas the, the model we have at the moment is a stick and regulatory, whereas a community catchment, it's a willing forum and people are there because they want to be there. Sounds a great idea. How have you found in practice? Have other farmers and those groups still have been willing to be part of it? 100%. Yeah, excellent. Yep. We've had uh, three meetings, four meetings, and just phone calls. We tried to use beef and lambs. Um, thing, but that wasn't the, the, the that didn't that didn't get us over the line, unfortunately, with the with the buy-in. So we did our phone phone calls, and we've had four meetings, and at those we've had over 150 farmers. Uh -huh. And I think out of one of those meetings, we may have had one person which doubted us a little bit, but I reckon I had him on side after uh -huh. before the meeting was over. Yep. Um, I, I I think that's that's a really key point and interesting to hear, Roger, because when you're saying phone calls and beef and lambs thing didn't work mm. that's just beef and lambs um, um, co contact lists and sending yep. out emails so what you're saying is yep. farmers picking up the phone to each other and phone almost a, a, a you know a, a, a phone tag or phone chain um, yep. that's what got the people there yep and and you're 100 percent right richard you know and I'll go into it a little bit more as to how we really got started. But basically, um, I could see what was happening. And um, I thought to myself, we either sit back and do nothing, or we get motivated and do something about it. And I, and I reiterated that earlier. And uh, so I just told that story to a few other people and um, organised a meeting, and away we went. Um, so we've, as I said earlier, as farmers, we have a choice. We can sit back, do nothing and continue getting the rules and regulations thrown at us, or we get motivated and do something, and that's what we did. Yeah, it's and pretty I, simple. I think from my point of view, setting up, a, setting up a, and running a program that's there to support farmer leaders like yourself and taking a lead yeah. in setting up these groups is you really need those people like yourself, Roger, to, to, to step up. Mm. Yep. Um, and I think it's fantastic how you all got on the phone to each other and didn't just kind of say, oh, well, we left it to beef and lamb, and it, um, yeah. yeah. So what is beef and lamb's role here in these? I mean, is it... It's well, guidance. Well, yeah. It's guidance, Aaron. And and they've been fantastic. But it's not going to work again if beef and lamb try to lead them from the top no, down, is what you're no, saying, No, no, it, it will never lead, it, ne it will never work if beef and lamb try to drive it, or if, um, if Landcare Trust, New Zealand Landcare Trust try to drive it. Um, it's got to be farmers have mm -hmm. to lead it. Like, there is so much support around us um, and when I say support, I mean Horizons. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been all over trying to help us. Beef and Lamb have been fantastic. Uh, um, uh, Land, New Zealand Landcare Trust have been fantastic. They've been our strong ones. Um, and we need, we need the support because we need the guidance because we're all busy people. Um, but the farmers must drive it, yeah. without a doubt. Now, and we were talking beforehand, you know, we may do another one of these videos, Richard, around some of our technical materials, how we can support them. But... Yeah, and it's, I, th I think what we didn't say at the beginning, Aaron, but it's, it's worth drawing people's attention to is on Beef and Lamb's website, if you, if you Google Beef and Lamb Catchment uh, Community Program, that'll take you to our Catchment Community page. And on that page, we've got a startup guide on how, how to set up a catchment group that we've developed with um, New Zealand Landcare Trust. But we've also got a whole lot of resources that groups can find useful um, for setting up their catchment group. Um, that might be draft society rules, a whole, whole range of stuff. So it's worth getting on there and having a look. Uh, and what we've, uh, what I did say in the introduction is what we've endeavoured to do is we've grabbed the, some resources from groups that we work mm -hmm. with that they say worked really well for them. So. Yeah, this is the importance of it being farmer-led and us using 
and capturing some of the stuff that's been successful for other groups and 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 being able to share it with 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 new groups. Yep. So it's all it's all farmer tested stuff. Yeah, Richard, you did right. We we do not we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Um, there's lots of people. There's a few groups doing this, and uh, um, I, I think we're fairly unique in, in the size of our area and our one incorporated society. Um, you do not need 50 incorporated societies. You only need one, um, and but that's up to your community as to how big you want to go. We're not going any bigger than 700,000 hectares. We think that's probably enough, um, but. Uh, yeah, it's very easy for a neighbour to say, oh, can we come under you? And that's what happened with the fungi who, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't see us going any bigger. Mm -hmm. So beeflamnz.com um, forward slash catchments is the web address. We'll put that on a slide here, but for those of you listening on the podcast, we'll put it in the description as well. Right, right. how we started. Uh, the group originally started due to the need to addressing feedlotting along the Rangitiki River, and I was, and I was getting feedback um, as a result of going to my meetings in Wellington that um, Horizons was under a huge amount of pressure with society taking photos, aeroplanes flying over top, um, and once again social pre pressure with photos being sent to Horizons saying, what are you guys doing about this? And I thought, shucks, uh, let's not go back where we were. So I got a group of the, I got, I, rang, I got on the phone and rang all the farmers down the Rangitiki River, and we had 60 farmers um, turn up at that meeting. Um, so when you say feedlotting, what are we talking? We're not talking, you know, a formal feedlot in the classic in terms of structure and building and so on. Some yes, it was. Yes, okay. so, yep. some some were, yep. but but feedlotting nowadays comes comes with everything from um, a rape crop with yeah. baleage put in it. Uh, that's classed as a feedlot when when it comes to winter and you're a greenie. Okay. Um, any any concentration of cattle by a natural waterway mm. is classed as a especially during winter. Is classed as a feedlot. Yeah, good. Um, we as farmers don't class it exactly. that way, yep. but uh, society does, yep. and society is the one who's putting the pressure on the government. Um, so that's who they listen to. And so, the, I mean, there's obviously the aesthetic, you know, how they look. Uh, what was was the stuff you measured in terms of what was getting into the waterway, the impact on water quality? Uh, can you talk about well, that? Yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we can. Um, like, we're very lucky. The Rangitiki is a pristine river. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of water comes down it, and a lot of people use it, fishermen, um, boaties, people swim in it and everything. And uh, dilution, uh, pollution is, uh, what's the word? Um, dilution. Dilution is the solution yeah. to pollution. Pollution. Yeah. And to be, to, to be fair, I'm not saying that's an excuse for the Rangitiki, but it does help because we have a large amount of water that comes down the Rangitiki. And there is lots of science that will be saying that we are polluting the river because when you're when you're putting a feedlot or a, a high concentration of cattle beside a river on leaky soils, it goes down and into the waterways. Mm -hmm. um, the Rangitiki is not badly polluted, mm -hmm. um, but still, it's society doesn't want it, mm -hmm. and we as, as 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 farmers have to come up with better ways of doing it. It's as simple as that, Aaron. Because I think that's that's a good point, Roger, and and not one that people always get their head around that even if we test the water or look mm. at in stream mm -hmm. health and it's all good there are certain practices that society and mm. and you know even some of our customers are just yeah. just not 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 okay with cool. so that that was actually a question i had noted for you richard they're called catchment groups which is physically related to the flow of water but it's not just about water, it can be about anything else in land use and community, you know, social license to operate, anything that falls So absolutely, that. and it comes back to the whole point of calling them catchment community groups. And, you know, particularly when I've had conversations with, you know, some of our farming colleagues in, in the arable sector or, or the deer industry, it's, you can form a kind of mm. a, a catchment or a collective mm. of people around, um, you know, you, in, the, in those two cases around being deer farmers or, or arable mm. farmers. Um, so it can, you can be a, you know, without sounding too jargony, kind of a, a, a community of interest, but mm. um, particularly when we're talking in, in the water quality space, people refer to um, yep. watershed catchments. But, but they're not just about water, they can be about any sort of Absolutely. So so. Other groups that we're working with are very keen on the topic of, um, of, of 
biodiversity or predator prey. Mm -hmm. yep. And when you're looking in that space, it tends to be what they refer to, and particularly our uh, people in DOC refer to as, as you look at a whole landscape, mm -hmm. which could be the whole East Coast. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's what's really important is that people start coming together yeah, around. That, that, Richard, Richard, that's the key. That's the key. You know, water is a big thing because that's the focus of society at the moment. But when I when I sold my story to a group of Tavi farmers, there was one farmer got up and he said, "Roger," he said, "it really annoys me that farmers still have rubbish dumps." Mm -hmm. And um, and I said, "Well, maybe that could be your theme for your." Year that for this year, if you get a community catch going, that you're going to work out how you're going to get rid of all your community, get rid of all your rubbish dumps on your farm. And in any case, he came up to me at the end of the meeting and he said, "He said, Roger, you said you're going to refer to me as the rubbish dump person, aren't you?" But but, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, as a community catchment is about getting people together, mm -hmm. um, and it's getting everyone that from from the people that are hiding under a rock to the people that are way up at the top. Mm -hmm. And I said it's bringing everyone together and getting on the journey. Um, and it could be water to start with. It might be it might be winter grazing systems. It might be biodiversity. It might be planting native trees or whatever it is. But it's getting everyone in the same mindset, heading in the same direction on a journey. Excellent. All right, we better keep moving on. We're starting to. Um, this is great stuff, but we have got a lot more to cover as well. Right. Uh, so what did we do? We had four farmer meetings. I'll just touch on this, and it was uh, basic, basically. It was, they were, we, we rang around farmers and areas and we, had, and we had group meetings and we ended up with 150 farmers and uh, I don't think we ended up with any, any people that weren't in agreement with what we were trying to do. They said, yep, this is fantastic, let's get on board. Um, we were well and truly supported by um, Beef and Lamb, Lanky Trust and Horizons. Really important. Those people are there, make sure you use them. Uh, they're bending over backwards to help us. Our levies help pay, pay their wages, um, so they're there for us to use, and they've got all the knowledge in the world to help us. Our structure. How do, what, what, how, what are we and how do we get going? Um, we have one incorporated society which covers the Rangitiki River, the Rangitiki Sands, the Turakina uh, catchment, and potentially the Fungai Hu, which is 706,000 hectares. Uh, a representative from each subcatchment. So a subcatchment might be a small group of um, farmers around a community hall or a school or a water body or whatever. Um, you could end up with quite a few of those. And we could end up with we could end up with a hundred. Yep. We could end up with one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. but that that doesn't matter. No, it's still manageable. Still manageable. Yep. yep. Because all all of the incorporate I must explain all the incorporated society does is it manages the money. Okay, and it is a formal place for people because this thing's going to cost money, um, and as you'll see in a minute, we we employ people. Someone's uh -huh. got to manage that, uh -huh. and so the corporate corporate society is the formal formal system for capturing the data and managing the money, basically, uh -huh. and and also um, it is the connection between the sub catchments and horizons, the government, beef and lamb, uh, anyone who's interested. There is this incorporated society which can manage and filter that information transfer. Uh -huh. uh, so our incorporated society is right now we're in the process of employing someone, um, and their job is basically uh, to go around and support farmers, uh -huh. support the subcatchments. Um, they're the ones that are going to record the before shots and after shots every time we do something. Um, whether it's fencing off a critical source area, whether it's fencing off a river, whether it's planting um, uh, riparian planting uh, for um, to capture effluent, whatever it is, they they are there to support farmers uh, in 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 their end goal, but it's to it's to capture it before and afterwards, and and basically put put some formalities around mm -hmm. it. Very important, very important role. Um, and at this stage, we're employing one. Uh, as our subcatchments get going, I can see us uh, getting up to two, three, four, even half a dozen people in the, in the 700,000 hectares. Mm. Um, yep, we need people that can communicate with farmers and, um, yep, really important role. And, and Roger, look, looking here at, uh, at, at, at the advert for, for this position, mm -hmm. you, you 
got something about ability to, uh, I guess, pursue and apply for, for funding as yep. part of that role? Yep, definitely. Like, uh, the, the current model is the government's throwing, throwing money at us or throwing money at Horizons and everyone else and saying, give this to people that need help. But no, very few of us are using it. Mm. So what our incorporated society allows us to do, it allows us to start turning that model upside down and going up, point, get, mm. applying for money uphill. Um, and we've already had some conversations with um, the MPIs of the world and the government things, and there's not many boxes we do not tick. Mm. Um, so the the person that we're going to employ uh, that will be on the, that is in their job description or in their is in their in their part of their job is to help us do that. Um, like farmers can do can do a lot of things, but we're also busy people, mm. and, and we need we need some professional people employed by us. That's the key. They must be employed by us as our incorporate society to do it on our behalf. So I was just thinking, is that something you would advise other groups to more often than not aim to employ? Definitely. You know, to have that, just to make it easier all around. You, you need the support. Yeah. Like when you when you have a group of farmers and you try and put a meeting together, uh, it's challenging mm-hmm. because everyone's busy. Um, when we when you're up, up and going, like the, the, the sub-catchments, they will meet when they want to meet, mm-hmm. but they'll work it around their, their, their seasons, their lambing, their docking and everything else. And they may only meet three times a year. Um, the incorporated society, that may only meet twice a year. Um, but when you've got someone who's formally employed, they are the they are the they are the ones that can keep the cogs turning. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that go around to all the sub catchment groups, help organise all those meetings, go and knock on the doors of the farms and saying, um, "You can, need to come and join our, our community catchment, um, et cetera, et cetera." Mm-hmm. So very key role. Yep. And, and just further to that, Roger, is it really important that they're from the community or the catchment? Well, oh, very important. Yep, very, very important, Richard. Um, we want someone who's passionate about farming and about the environment as much as we are. Um, we don't want someone who's just in there to, to do their nine to five. Um, it's a part-time job we're employing. We're paying them well. Um, I, I actually think it's a fantastic job. Um, if, uh, for somebody who's got the time, it's flexible. Uh, it could be a young mother or it could be anyone. Um, it's just all, they, all they've got to do is get out and connect. And and and, and uh, thing, you know, the, the next thing I've just dropped down. The incorporate society keeps all the catchment information, which it shares with the regional councils, media, NGOs, and the government. Um, very important role, uh, and it's getting back to that telling our story. But we've actually got to provide the information, capture the information, provide the information to the horizons and the governments and the NGOs and the regional councils, so that they can tell our story on our behalf. But we have to give them credible information. Uh, that records what we're doing. Do you think some of the appeal for people to kind of join um, you know, the, the catchment group is that things like your data and all your information uh, are kind of held by farmers or, or held by the group? Correct. Yep, 100% Richard. Like we've had discussions with um, Horizons. They don't want our information. Um, they said, no, that's your information. You share with us what what you feel is suitable to share, and that gives farmers a huge amount of confidence because they do not want, um, like, to move forward to move forward in life. You have to measure where you are, and so if a farmer has something measured that they're not doing so well, it's not going to suddenly get put on the on the, in the papers or reported that Fred Dag um, has got a pollution problem. Um, that is something that he will own. The, the, the incorporate society will own and it will not go out as farmer X, Y or Z um, has got this, this and this. It'll, it'll go out in a filtered manner controlled by the um, incorporated uh-huh. society. Yep. Um, our ground rules. Right, every farmer, every farm will have to have an environmental plan. Um, you know, it's a bit like you've got to have a budget, you've got to know how you're going to operate your farm for the year. Every farm will have to have, env- have a, an environmental plan. And whether it's to the detail of a SLUI plan, uh, LEP, or whatever it is, it's going to have to be an environmental plan of some sort that um, we can report against. 
Yeah, so do you have a accreditation or a minimum standard there? I mean, we can't just have some, you're not going to get away with somebody scribbling one on the back of an envelope and saying that's my plan. I mean, well, that's a start, Aaron. Well, you would, that would be what you're I, talking about? Probably not, but it, but that's probably more than what they've got now. Fair enough. Like, yep. we as farmers all have an environmental plan, mm. and it's probably in the head. Mm. Mm-hmm. What we've got to do is start putting it on paper. Yep. And there are there is beef and lamb... Uh, 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 all over this mm-hmm. with helping us do land environmental plans. So, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, we're going to want a, an environmental plan that is up to a standard um, that is that is suitable for for, yep. for moving forward. You know, DRNZ, but, DRNZ, yep. FAR, they've all got their, yep, they've all got their them. industry's yeah. versions. Horizons, the whole, the whole, all the regional councils have got them. And, um, you know, but as I said, <coughs> on a piece of paper is better than in the head. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's that's really... Key, Roger. It's people get just getting started and, yep. and giving it a go, and yep. um, it's getting on the journey. Yeah, absolutely. That, the people you're employing is that going to be part of their role to assist with that, or are they just? Sort of yes, I'm sure it will be. Yep, yep, yep. They'll be yep. they'll be coming to those um those meetings um uh, where farmers are doing going through a workshop mm-hmm. uh, um d- helping them helping them develop their um farm environmental plans. Yeah, I mean, and, and from our point of view, Richard, I think when groups say, can you come and run a workshop or help us with these, then that's mm. exactly what we're looking for. A- absolutely, and we're, um, we're not kind of guessing if people need them. Um, we've got people coming to us asking for them, and yep. that's the same mm. with, a, with a whole load of uh, other, mm. other resources as, as well. Mm. Right, our ground rules. Every farm will be levied. Now, this is really important. Um, we as farmers have to put our have to put some skin in the game, um, and this was debated a lot in our in our Rangitiki uh, Rivers Community Collective. Um, so we're we're going to charge every farmer, and uh, there's no one said no. Um, we're going to charge every farmer seventy five cents per hectare, up to a max- maximum of thousand dollars per year. Um, the minimum fee and a minimum fee of fifty dollars per farm, and that's covering um, our lifestyle farmers, uh, and. Um, so what, what that money does, that there is, will come into the incorporated society and allows us to employ the likes of the person we're advertising for at the moment and um, basically uh, support um, our environmental groups. It'll also, it'll also help pay for probably some water testing um, because when a farmer gets in a sub-catchment group, uh-huh. they, actually, they actually want to get hold of it uh-huh. and find out where they're at. Mm. Um, so it's once about causes doing that measure um, and seeing where their waters are at, seeing if they are polluting. And um, so that's that's where the fees coming in to help pay for all that. You say it will be levied. How's it? I mean, is that basically just a a handshake, a community agreement, or is there some legislation, some enforcement behind that? Uh, good question. Um, they won't be allowed in our group if they don't. Okay. Yeah, so. so- it's um, not. A, it's not imposed by the district council, the regional council. I think it's basically no. the incorporated society. The incorporated society. So it is yep. technically voluntary. But it's, 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 it. it's it's technically voluntary, but but we've had, we've had a meeting um, with the minister, and uh, we've discussed this point with him. And, and at the end of the day, I'm getting fairly good indication that farmers are going to have to be in a community mm-hmm. catchment, um, or if they don't they're going to have some fairly strict rules put around them mm-hmm. which they're going to have to be able to convince the government yep. that they're doing a great job which is going to meet a farm and environmental plan and a whole lot of other mm-hmm. things with rules and regulatory regulation around it. So I think people are going to be encouraged into community catchments which is a far better better way forward than um, regulation. Yep. Um, and I think the other important thing, and you could probably speak to this from some of your experience with talking to funders, Roger, is how valuable or how do they see um, that farmer financial contribution? Oh, it's huge, Richard. Yeah. Like, the meeting we had with MPI, and we basically went through this with them, what we're doing, they just said, they said, this is what is what we're all about. They said, we will want to support you guys. Um and when we said we're putting some skin in the game ourselves, they just said, boy, that's commitment. Um, that's fantastic. And the government has got oodles of money for in the environmental space at the moment. And so 
let's get hold of it, let's get motivated as a, as a group of farmers, get our community catchments going, and, and, and turn that model upside down instead of being driven from the top down, drive it from the bottom up, and start applying for that money. Isn't and it? it's, it, to me, it's readily available. And, and very often funders want a 50%, mm. they, they'll, they'll kind match. of match. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think it's... Yep. We, we, we haven't been given those figures yet. Um, all we've been told is we tick a lot of boxes. Mm. That's yep. the usual line. They'll, they'll help those that are helping themselves. Yeah, yeah. The, yep. yep. It's not going to be... It's a, there's a quid pro quo. They'll put money in if you're putting money in. Yep, yep. So, community sub-catchment groups will be based around <coughs> water catchments, streams, community halls. I think we've covered that. Mm -hmm. um, so the sub-catchments are basically as big as you like or as small as you like, um, but they're based around a community. Uh, if you're going outside a community, it's probably too big. And touching on what Richard was saying before, those sub-catchment groups may have slightly different focuses. For some it might be water quality, for others it could be biodiversity, things yep. like that. That's, yeah, that's and it, it, could, it could even be... A, a production issue that, mm -hmm. yeah. that a whole lot of people have got in common and you know yeah. we can probably touch on action mm -hmm. action networks or you've probably got a similar one of these mm -hmm. on, on action networks yep. the, the, the key is though uh, is bringing everyone together starting the journey yep. that's the key um, and regulation is going to drive us in a direction to start with because we're behind the regulation um, and which is water quality and and and, and holding on to soils but it's biodiversity, it's everything. It's rubbish mm -hmm. dumps, it's the whole lot. Um, and here I've, got a, I've put in the emphasis is on participation. Peer pressure and education will drive change. Um, education is the key thing I think will drive change, but uh, leaning over the fence, talking to your neighbour, having a beer, and saying, uh, this is how I did this this year, now thinks, oh, shucks, that's a good idea, I think I'll do that next year. And um, so there's the peer pressure. Um, Pretty simple. So here's here's the model that I see uh, us moving into. Um, the future model is driven from the bottom up. So community catchments uh, formed, get together, and we're supported by regional councils, New Zealand Land Care Trust, Beef and Lamb, and Dairy NZ. Um, we've got to drive it, but they're our support, and there's there's hundreds of people in that in that space that can help us. We will be going to the regional councils and saying, "Do you have some money for this?" And, and to the MPIs, and then the money will flow down. But it's not going to go to the one or two farmers, smart farmers, um, who are applying for it with the current model. It's going to go to all farmers, um, because that money will be spread amongst all farmers in a community catchment. So it's a completely flip on the model of being, from instead of being coming from the top down, it's going to be driven from the bottom up. But we have to be the motivators. Farmers have to be the motivators. We can't no one else is going to drive it for us. Uh, we, as a as a group, have to drive our own um, our own future. And it's not, you know, the the key. The major landowners are farmers, but we're talking everybody in the community. Your neighbour who's got that wee block and is a school teacher or a yep, we're talking worker or whatever. We're, we're, we're all in this together here. We're talking. We're talking everyone, Aaron. We're like mm -hmm. the, when a community gets together, the schools might grow some native plants mm -hmm. um, for some riparian planting. Um, the, the, the tourist operator who's a fly fisherman, he'll come along to those sub-catchments and get a better understanding mm -hmm. as, to, as to what farmers are going through and the costs associated mm -hmm. with things. So instead of him being on the outside criticising and saying, oh, those so-and-sos are always polluting my waterway, he can actually come along and say, well, actually, shucks, I can see the amount of work going in and how these guys are changing their farming practices um, mm -hmm. To, to, to better our water stands. You know, the iwi, uh, when we presented this to the iwi, they were just all over this. They said, Chucks, we've been trying to do this for years. Um, they said, this is fantastic. They said, this is what we want too. So they want to be involved as well. Um, mm. uh, a specific case, fish and game? Fish and game, yep, they're with us. Yep. Um, I, I wouldn't say they're fully engaged yet, mm -hmm. um, Aaron, but they're... Uh, they're definitely they know what we're doing and they're definitely uh, um, they're definitely in agreement of what 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 our movement forward is, yeah, which is great. Mm. What do we need? One thing we need we need a standardised recording system, really important. Uh, like um, you know, what, all for, rec what, for recording water test results, all that. Is that the sort e of thing everything, Aaron. Yeah, like. 
you know, <coughs> it's all going back to telling our story. Um, we've got to capture the story first. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't capture it, um, then we've got nothing to tell. It's as simple as that. And um, so we need a recording system, but we can't have one, we can't have 50 different recording systems because somehow this has to filter through to authorities, e.g. regional councils and the government, so that they, um, so, you know, it'd be great to have a, a national recording system, um, which we all recorded into, um, kept, as, kept at our individual level though. Um, but yeah, so we need a recording system. Mm -hmm. You know, at the moment we've got, we've got Excel and we've got iPhones and we've got, all sorts of things, but um, it'd be it'd be good to get that standardised. And I think it's, that's a good point, Roger, because often you see that you know within a catchment community group that they've got data or information on on four different PCs, yeah, um, in yeah in various different forms. Um, the other thing is too, it's um, it's all that data and information being collected in the same way. So it's not just where it's stored, mm -hmm. but it's how it's collected so that it's in, it's kind of all speaks the same language. It's in the, yeah. it's in the same mm -hmm. format. Well, well, the key is Richard, we need to, we need to make it easy to tell our story. Mm. And if we, if, if we go to Horizons, I, uh, we've, we've, we've got all these photos and things. We need to make it easy for them to be able to, ca to be able to see those photos and see what we've done, so that they can tell our story, and then the government can tell our story, and then we can actually push back at all the social media, which is criticising us so much. Um, it's really important, you know. If, if we don't if we don't measure and capture it, uh, we're never going to go anywhere. Mm. And are you? Is your group thinking of that? I mean, you talk about social media. Are you? You're engaging in that space as well. You're telling the story. I mean, not just what you're doing, trying to make things better, whether it's water and all the other bits and pieces. But are you? Do you see the group getting into that space of telling others? Uh, good question, Aaron. Like, we we actually engaged with a um a, a person who specialises in, in media thing, and it became very paramount to us that we didn't actually have a story to tell mm -hmm. yet, and um. And that's basically because we're behind the game. Mm -hmm. And so one thing we do not want to do is, is start telling our story before we've actually got a story to tell. And sure thing, we've got some small stories to tell, but we haven't got a big story to mm -hmm. tell. And a big story to tell is when we have 50 um, incorporated societies around the country and all farmers are involved with environmental plans and we're on the journey. That is a story to tell. Uh -huh. um, like an example I can use is uh, Sea Lords. Is it Sea Lords of the fishing industry? Uh -huh. um, they are starting to tell their story on TV now. You'll see those things, how they're looking after the uh -huh. fisheries and things. Well, they did two or three years for that to capture that information before uh -huh. they started to tell the story. And so, um, yeah, we've got, we've got to be careful in that space. We've definitely got a story to tell, yep. but timing's right. If we, tell, if we tell it too early, um, there's going to be too many farmers there which aren't part of the story, which will just get put up in line yeah. lights that everything's not being done. So, yeah. Excellent. It's good. Right. What else do you need? Oh, good question. What else do we need? Push the button. Financial resources support led farmer groups, which is which is you know we've we've discussed that yep. this thing is going to think money's going to drive this thing. Um, we need we need those society we need those people employed um, by our groups, so that's money. Everyone needs money, and I think I think it's there. We've just got to get it, get going. Mm -hmm. uh, group coordinated, hundred percent dependent on volunteers. At, at the moment, it takes quite a lot to get these groups mm. going. Um, I've only got so many hours in the day. Um, the Mark Crystals have only got so many hours in the day, and the and the Ruth Rainies have only got so many hours in the day. Uh, and it's very hard to actually get everything done. Um, and so a group coordinator would be great, um, but still we cannot lose. It has to be farmer driven. Um, so that that's that's a bit of a. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge that one having a group coordinator but then it's still got to be farmer driven mm -hmm. mm. well those applications close on the, on the 17th of, uh, of next month yep Roger, so yep they do yep we're, we're looking forward to that and if you're listening to this after the 17th of June 2019 forget that because <laughs> <laughs> we're recording this on the 31st of May so hopefully we'll get it out before that closing date but this is hopefully going to be a resource for long term anyway 
Anyway, yeah. carry on. Sorry, Roger. The last thing I've added is, um, I think it's the last, might be one more, um, a bottom-up community-owned catchment strategy. So that is, rather than society telling us how we're going to manage our environment, um, it is a community catchment, a bottom-up one, so it's turning that model upside down. So we, as community members, designing our own catchment environmental standards going forward. And, and I'm not talking about the next two years, I'm talking about our 30, 40, 50 years. And we may all decide that we want to plant on our farms uh, 10 hectares of native bush um, uh, that will be fenced off for the bee colonies uh -huh. or whatever, whatever it is. It's, it's setting our own standards basically uh -huh. as, a, as a catchment rather than being driven from the top down. All right. Um, and we need Horizon support. We all need our regional council support because if we haven't got that, we're, we're, we're not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, I, I've presented this to Horizons mm. and uh, they said, Roger, you know we're all over you with this and we'll bend over backwards mm. to help you. I think that's close to the words they used um, and they are. Well, they yeah, they love Richard, this. I think that would be the feeling from every regional council. They would, they, they were, in some ways, they're waiting for answers from farmers. Absolutely, and I think it's a point that often gets lost: is that the regional councils or even the regulators or the government need mm. the farmers because at the end of the day, who's going to take the action mm. on the ground that will make a difference? Yep. And you know, that's the people who are the custodians of the land. So that's, um, you know, to a large extent, that's our mm. farmers. Yeah, you know, that, there's a choice here. We either employ another thousand regulators in the Rangitiki uh, Horizons region to come around and check all the farmers on a daily basis, or um, uh, they support us and um, we do it on their behalf. Um, that's the that's that's the key. We're we're going to take over their job at the end of the day because we'll set the standards higher than what their regulatory standards are. It'd be interesting if there's an economist out there that wants to crunch the numbers on that, and uh, we can and 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 show government that they'll they'll get a far better return on investment by supporting um, this kind of uh, community catchment community yeah. catchment initiative like Rogers rather than spending all that money on regulatory frameworks. Mm. 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 No, it's good. So I hope I hope that provides everyone with a with a with a good understanding. Oh, the last thing I should add, what we need we need time. We need time to educate everyone. We need time to measure, and we need time to make a difference. And and by time, I'm I don't mean months or weeks. I mean years. Um, this is not going to happen overnight, uh, and, and we need to get that message across to the to the authorities. Um, that you know that we're we're getting water standards that we're being told are going to be set by 2023 or 2025. It might take two to 2030. We don't know, but we need time um, because we don't know uh, how far where we're at at the moment. Well, we do because um, we've got all the regulatory things that um, the Greenies put up, who says we're polluting everything. Um, but we need time to actually measure where we're at um, and and work out uh, how we're going to get. Um, to where we're required and how we're going to get ahead. Brilliant. And that's probably a good point to start to wrap up on. Sounds good. So. Sounds good. One little one little thing I need to add in here. I'll just put in, I put a little thing. You might be able to read it. Um, I put protecting our environment, putting our primary industry ahead of the human feedlots. And um, by that I mean all towns, um, they have their food carted to them, same as cattle do in feedlots. And um, all of their waste product is piped out, uh, mostly into the waterways, um, which is exactly what's uh, hap is, is, is what happens in, in town. So, I actually think our farming world is well ahead of our towns or human feedlots, as I call them now. All right, you and might I'll... want to edit that bit out, Aaron. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all gold. So, look on that note. I mean, Richard, you got any last comments before we do a bit of a wrap up? No, I think other than thanks, Roger, for, for sharing your story. Because if you know, it's the likes of you. If I could get them out around the country to, to you know, farmer leaders or people who are really keen to set up these processes, then um, they're far better hearing it from you than me. Um, but if they are interested in setting up these mm -hmm. processes, then um, yeah, by all means, uh, have a look at our catchment website yeah. and the resources, and 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 get in touch. Uh, either with beef and lamb or the likes of New Zealand Landcare Trust.
Yep. You've got your local extension manager, you've got bplannz.com forward slash catchments or our 0800 number. Uh, Roger, any last comments? Anything that's occurred to you? you want to uh, yep. Yeah. I've, I've, I've focused on the Rangitiki region. Um, we need this across the whole of New Zealand. Um, this, is a, this is a New Zealand wide thing. Um, we need leaders um, in other areas of the country, and there's lots of them happening, but we need, if, if you're not hearing anyone talking about doing a community catchment in your area, we need someone to do it, and it could be you. Um, but we need this across the whole country. If we get this across the whole country, the government and the regulators will back, out, back off the farming industry very, very quickly. We'll still have some regulation, but they will take the pressure off us because they'll see that we're actually motivated and doing something. So as far as I'm concerned, it's in our, it's, it, it is in our hands as farmers. Um, we can either sit back and do nothing, or we can get motivated and do something about it. Brilliant. So lots of resources at beeflambnz.com forward slash catchments. One in particular, if you've listened to this, are thinking, yep, this is for us, or this is for me. There's a uh, fact sheet on there from Lankier Trust and Beef and Lamb New Zealand called How to Set Up a Catchment Community Group. And it's ba it breaks it down to just basically six steps that you can work through. And as Rogers said, and as Rich has reinforced, Beef and Lamb New Zealand and the other industry good organisations, Dairy NZ, FAR, um, Deer NZ, are all there to help. Uh, it needs to be farmer led. I think that's been the most important message from, from this interview today. But we're there to help and we've got some guidance in there. So. Look, on that, this one's been a wee bit longer than normal, but it's been an excellent discussion, and we see these things as really important, so it was worth taking the time. Thanks to Richard Parks, Environment Capability Manager for the North Island, and Roger Dalrymple, Farmer, but that's probably a wee bit simple, but from the Rangitiki Rivers Community Collective, Collective Incorporated. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Aaron. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.